Okay, so thanks everyone. Um, I'm gonna show some recent research of ours on time optimal trajectory planning for Quadrotus. We have heard quite a lot about agile flight in this workshop, but actually, unfortunately, no autonomous system really is as agile as humans. Humans can be insanely good pilots. They have extremely robust visual perception and they can iteratively learn when flying a track. They can improve on their last lap and make better and better times. But what if, just for a second, we assume that robot perception was on a human level and state estimation was no longer a bottleneck? Or what if human pilots want to become faster and want to know what would actually be the best trajectory to fly? We arrive at the question of how can we plan time optimal trajectories through a sequence of waypoints? And state of the art research has done this using polynomial trajectory planning, which generates smooth trajectories, but suffers from some drawbacks as we will see later on. On the other hand, there is numerical trajectory optimization, which discretizes the trajectory in time. However, if we want to pass multiple waypoints in such a trajectory optimization problem, we actually need to allocate these waypoints as costs or constraints to specific nodes in time. And we do not know this allocation beforehand. So that makes the, makes the optimization kind of uh, very influenced by our initial guess or by our time allocation. Let's take a step back and look at what's actually the limiting factor in flying fast trajectories with the Quadroto. The Quadroto has four independent uh, thrust inputs. If we apply a differential force, uh, we can actually cause a body torque and generate some rotation that allows us to align the acceleration direction. However, our three, uh, our four uh, actuators are limited. They have a certain minimum and maximum thrust they can apply. And we can reformulate the thrust into the collective thrust. And this is the body C direction acceleration that we can get and the three-dimensional torque around the body. So to be quick, we need maximum acceleration, but we also need it to face in the right direction. And to actually align our acceleration direction, we need to rotate, and therefore we need some torque. However, every time we apply torque, we need differential forces, right? And so when we are already applying the maximum thrust at each rotor, the only way we can generate differential forces is by lowering, lowering some of the, the thrusts. Therefore, when we want to rotate or change our rate of rotation, we actually need to limit our linear acceleration that we can have. And this renders this problem, or this renders the quadrotor, an underactuated system with input constraints, where actually the reachable input space for acceleration and torque is coupled. Now, polynomials are sometimes suboptimal. They are describing decoupled axes. And this is very efficient to plan, actually, but it renders the true input limits very difficult to apply. And polynomial trajectories actually enforce smoothness, which facilitates tracking. But on the other hand, it renders the input change rate dependent on the time scale. And it often limits the input change rate to values lower than what we could apply on a quadrotor. So we want to tackle this problem with trajectory optimization. We formulate this by uh, using our quad that should pass a bunch of waypoints. To find the trajectory through these waypoints, we discretize the trajectory and we can enforce the system dynamics, the input constraints, we can fly through multiple waypoints. But as I mentioned before, we have to allocate our waypoints to specific nodes along the trajectory. This uh, allocation is unknown a priori, and therefore we need to somehow find this allocation. But we don't know the trajectory yet that we're going to fly, so it's a bit of chicken and egg problem. So instead of allocating these waypoints to specific nodes along the trajectory, we actually formulate a measure of progress along the trajectory. 
we formulate this measure of progress individually for each waypoint. And then we want to track this progress and we only allow the progress to change in close proximity to a waypoint. This allows us to simultaneously optimize the trajectory and the waypoint time allocation. So how does this work in detail? First, we discretize our trajectory and our trajectory consists of some states and inputs. The, the inputs are applied over a certain delta time and this delta time is dependent on the total trajectory time. In our case, this total trajectory time is actually part of the optimization variables together with our states and inputs. The system dynamics are enforced with a quality constraint between the states and the system's input limitations are a box constraint. Finally, we can optimize our trajectory for the minimum time. So how can we enforce it to pass through waypoints? Let's imagine we have two waypoints that we want to pass within a certain tolerance. Now we formulate our progress variable here, lambda one for our waypoint one and lambda two for our waypoint two. These progress variables are one at the beginning and zero at the end of our trajectory. One corresponds to indicating an incompleted waypoint whereas zero indicates a completed waypoint. The progress variables actually evolve along the trajectory over a variable mu. And we can now tie this variable or constrain this variable to only allow change on the certain conditions. So for our uh, time allocation problem, we use a complementarity progress constraint. This means that we formulate a constraint between all the states and the waypoints and whenever a state is further away than our tolerance, uh, it should not be able for the progress variable related to this waypoint to be completed at this state. We do this by formulating a constraint on the distance of the uh, momentary state from the waypoint together with the slack variable for its tolerance. Now, this uh, expression is non-zero if we are too far away from the state and therefore our complementary expression here, the progress or the evolution of our progress needs to be zero. However, if we look at the state close to our waypoint that is within tolerance, actually the expression here in the bracket can become zero and therefore our evolution of progress can be non-zero. This means that this waypoint at this state can be marked completed. If we look at the trajectory, it looks a bit like this. So we have lambda 2, which until our waypoint 2 is marked as incompleted, and from here on is marked as completed. And the same goes for lambda 1 for our waypoint 1, which after state 3 is marked as completed. So with this, we are able to actually optimize the trajectory and the time allocation problem at the same time. Now, we want to evaluate this in kind of a bottom-up approach. We start by just looking at a very simple scenario. We want to fly a straight line and we have one setup where we evenly distribute some waypoints along a straight line. In the second setup, we have our waypoint squeezed a bit to the beginning of the straight line. Now we would expect to get from the optimization exactly the same solution because it doesn't really matter where our waypoints along this line are. And in fact, this is exactly what we get out of it. So we get a solution that has a, a equal total time in both cases, flies the same trajectory, uses the same inputs, which furthermore are kind of like bang-bang inputs, where we only spend a little bit of time away from the maximum thrust at the beginning to introduce some rotation. But then we spend all the inputs uh, fully at the maximum or at the upper limit of what's possible to accelerate as fast as possible along the trajectory. And we get this exactly the same way in both scenarios. The only thing that is different is how our progress variables um, indicate the, the progress along the trajectory. So in one scenario, 
our progress variables flip from uh, one to zero to mark a waypoint that has completed at specific times corresponding to these waypoints. But in, another, in the other scenario, they flip at different times because we have a different distribution of these waypoints. Now, we can go one step further and ask the question, well, isn't that probably very uh, in the in initialization dependent? So we did a bit of convergence analysis on a scenario where we have uh, where we fly from an initial condition at the top left here to a first waypoint on the right hand side, back to a second waypoint on the left hand side. The red line here is our initial guess. And we set up a second scenario where we want to fly the same waypoints, but this time we have a poor initialization guess that actually skips waypoint one and goes directly to waypoint two. Again, even if we provide this initialization to the optimization, it finds the exactly the same solution taking 3.6 seconds in both cases and arrives at the uh, dark blue or blackish trajectory solution here. However, it takes some ad additional steps to uh, reach this solution. So we also applied this to some larger scale racetracks. Um, one prominent one is probably one of the racetracks from the last year's NeurIPS uh, Game of Thrones challenge with the air sim simulation. This is here on the right hand side and this is the qualification uh, track number one. And on this track, the best team in the competition actually reached a time of, 30 sec of around 30 seconds. This is actually quite fast already. However, if we feed this track into our optimization, uh, it will generate a feasible solution that passes the whole track in only 24 seconds. This is around 20% faster than what the uh, uh, fastest team achieved. Now, we also performed uh, additional evaluations comparing our work to other state-of-the-art approaches. Um, we also uh, in investigate the behavior of non-convex formulations under different initializations. And we even give a qualitative comparison to some human flown trajectories. But all of this would probably go a bit past the time of this presentation. And therefore, I would like to uh, mentioned that this is all going to be in an archive paper coming out later today, today or probably tomorrow. And it's called uh, Complementarity Progress Constraints for Time Optimal Quadrupled Trajectories. Now, our approach is capable, given an accurate model of generating truly time optimal trajectories that are feasible for quadrupleds and respect and also exploit the actual actuated limits. However, there are several open questions that we have right now, which go over the efficient, over efficient problem formulations to um, convexity of the problem, convexifying the problem for certain scenarios, or deriving guarantees for the optimality of solutions. We also want to ask the question whether the full time horizon needs actually to be respected in planning something or whether we can arrive at very similar solutions and only planning on over a subset of the whole uh, track. Then one very interesting part is how accurate are our models and how can we model aerodynamic effects and how can we trade off speed against robustness so that we actually can execute these trajectories on real systems. Because if we spend all the time at the actuated limit, there is really nothing left for robustness. And with that, I want to thank you very much for your attention and please check out our upcoming paper.